What's up, everybody? We're back. Hey, what's up? This is Bananas Unpeeled. This is Jesse. I'm Jesse. My name is Jared. We are live Monday afternoon. We are just a week from Bananas Opening Day. We are That's week- not right. Well, we are a week from Bananas Fan Fest. We're a week from Bananas Fan Fest. We are about a little over a week from Bananas Opening Day. And we've got a pretty crazy, fun episode we're talking about today. There's been some amazing videos that have been released this week. And we are talking about what the traditions are, some of the greatest traditions in sports, mm-hmm. but also what the, what, what the traditions we have created here are mm-hmm. as the Bananas, and some of the fan traditions that have been created, and, and really maybe getting into some of the weirdest traditions that are also out there. And so this episode is totally focused on the crazy traditions in all of sports. I think sports, by and large, has some of the most ridiculous, outlandish fan bases in the world. Definitely in Savannah we have those people. But their traditions just get crazier and crazier and crazier, and that's what we're talking about today. And I'm hoping, actually, this will spur some even more traditions coming yeah. this season at Grace's Stadium. Because the tradition, when things just start happening, we look around like, are the fans really doing that? Yes. Like, that's awesome. Yes. And so uh, I think sports does a great job of this. Because it's not like you go to the movie theater and like, oh, I love that tradition at the movie theater. <laughs> like, it, no, it doesn't happen. <laughs> the tradition of getting ripped off. and Yes, yeah, getting ripped off and paying $20 tradition. for this. That's yeah. a good tradition. But we're talking about fun traditions. At the ballpark yes. today. Fun traditions. Yeah. And, and so if you have a favorite tradition, if you have a sports tradition that you can think of, uh, like holding a banana in, yes. in, in a show, uh, put that in the comments. If you're watching on Facebook right now, put that in the comments. If you're listening to the podcast or watching on YouTube, throw those in as well. If you want to email us, call us, text us. We'll hand out those phone numbers and email addresses later on in the show. You're from Boston. That's correct. Boston. Well, no, I'm from Situate, Massachusetts. Uh, you're, from, you're from that area, the Boston yes, area. Yes, the Boston world. Uh, I, I do feel bad for Boston sports lovers right now. I mean, it's been like, I think, 100 days since the last world championship from a Boston sports team. It has been a challenge. So they're going through that drought right there. But but Boston sports have been kind of known as very heavy in tradition. Yes. What are your some of your favorite, not only Boston traditions, but just sports traditions in general? Well, there's a lot. I mean, well, you know, I, I grew up – uh, as a big Red Sox fan, I actually was bat boy for the Red Sox when I was five years old. That was a wild experience. Fun I'll fact. tell some stories Fun later. Fact. I had like the little hat pulled up and I was on the big screen. But, um, you know, they, they start obviously the Sweet Caroline. Yeah. You know, the Boston Red Sox, the seventh inning, eighth inning of every game. They sing it every night. And then when the Red Sox win, they play I Love That Dirty Water. Yeah. And the whole stadium sings. And I think when you get thousands of people singing, that's a pretty cool tradition. It but, is. And, uh, you know, that obviously became very popular at all Red Sox games. But, you know, I, I really love some of the very unique traditions that you right. see more in the, the college environments and the high school environments. Yep. And I think that's where uh, the fan base really gets into it. Yeah, I think for me, growing up in North Carolina and being a part of college basketball in that scene, mm-hmm. it was the Cameron crazies. Like, the tradition of camping out the night before the game in Krzyzewskiville and, I mean, rushing into the state. Obviously, I didn't go to Duke, but like as you grew up in North Carolina basketball, like you know, lore, it was you had to go to to Cameron Indoor Stadium, and if you were a student there, you got to be a part of the Cameron Crazies. Like mm. you know, things like that where people you know live, breathe, die based on going to those games and creating that atmosphere. You know that that was something that was always stood out to me. And then you got to see it on TV, and like you got to hear the stories of the paint, the body yes. paint, and you know people that got to go to the UNC UNC Duke games, like all those kind of traditions in that neck of the yep. woods for me was pretty cool. But I think about like, you know, the Lambeau Leap, you know, yes. guys that, that have always wanted to play for the Green Bay Packers and, and make that first Lambeau yes. Leap. Um, you know, even internationally, the New Zealand rugby team, the All Blacks, and the pregame hockey. You've always wanted to do a hockey before the game. We are doing a hockey I don't even know year. if we can take that from them. I mean, that is like we their tradition. We develop our own hockey. If you don't know what a hockey is, look it up on YouTube. But it's this like huge like pump, fired up, yelling, screaming. It's this like taunting that is very aggressive. It, it, it's cultural. I mean, it, it's not something that's like made up. It is a part of like their yeah. their culture there. And, and the All Blacks have kind of created it as their thing. And, and now it's, you know, that fan base rallies around it. And, and they're that, chanting and yelling, yeah. And then we saw one. On YouTube, probably I don't know, maybe five or six years ago, the Portland Timbers. Oh yeah, in the yeah, MLS. Yeah. You remember that video that they, they showed? They, they, they chop up a lot, like they like use a 
a like, chainsaw. Chainsaw, so, which sounds very dangerous to put in the hands of the fans. Well, no. So, I mean, obviously, Portland is crazy in general. One of our favorite. Portland Mavericks. One of our favorite Portland shows, Mavericks. the Battered Bastards of Baseball, oh, Portland classic. Mavericks. Bing, um, Bing Russell. Bing Russell. But go, if you go, if you have a chance, go on YouTube and yep. look up, you know, the Portland, the, the Portland Timbers and some of their fans. And I, I forget what they call them, but uh, literally, if a player scores a goal, one of their uh, like lumberjack looking, one of their lumberjack looking They're one guys, of their lumberjacks chops up a log and then they hoist this piece of wood into the stadium and their fans pass the entire log around the stadium and it comes back and I guess the player gets it at the end of the night. That's insane. It's a log. It's a piece of wood. Yeah. But people go nuts over it. Yeah. I mean, you've seen lots of like even going to the college environment, uh, Texas A and M when they when they start throwing balls, the visiting team, yep. ball, ball four, <laughs> yeah. ball four, and then starts going ball five, ball five, and they all start doing. It. I mean, there's so many really cool traditions, especially in the college world. Yeah, a lot of people are commenting right now. You know, taking me out to the ball game and wearing rally caps. There's some fun stuff here. Let's get into. Bananas traditions. I, mean, I know. I want to go into some more. Uh, I want to set the tone more. I'm, I'm, I'm taking over okay, show, host for the next few Please seconds. Do. I saw this the other day. The curtain of distraction mm. with Arizona State. Mm. And mm. this blew my mind. If you haven't looked it up, check it out. Arizona State basketball curtain of distraction. When the visiting team is shooting free throws in the second half, they set up a curtain right behind the basketball yes, hoop. Yes, and yes, And then yes. they open up the curtain, and they will have like – a guy showering. A guy showering. A guy, a guy putting mayonnaise all over his body. Yeah, yeah. Two unicorns like making out. <laughs> like they'll have an old woman just yelling with a cane. They'll have people kayaking. They do different distractions, and it's actually proven, proven that uh, it gets about two and a half points difference because they actually shoot fifty to sixty percent in the second half versus seventy to eighty percent. Oh, first because half. they're facing one. They're way. They're facing yeah, yeah, one way. Sense. It actually is a home court advantage. So I went to Heck Will yeah. in our in our entertainment group. I was like, "What can we do to have that yeah. you know distraction?" That's a really cool one. And there's this other small college team. The first points they score in a year, they all rush the court and we're throwing things like it's like the biggest celebration. There's ever. a there's a lot of that, and, yeah. and we'll get into some of that in yeah. a bit. We, we have some crazier ones that come on because yeah, there's a lot of ones that have kind of developed over time and, yeah. and that's what we want to figure out like what is a tradition is it something that the team creates and hands off to or the, is it fans? Started by the fans or is it started by the fans or does organically it, does it come both ways? i mean there's a few ways of looking at it this other team uh when a guy strikes out he he has a toaster and he actually starts toasting he goes you're toast and starts throwing toast out <laughs> in the crowd so he actually has one. toasters which is really cool so it's like you know that was developed by a fan. There's yeah. so many things, and we challenge our fans, like, what can you do to bring to the experience? Because you are the experience. Fans yeah. first, they are the show. And it's huge. My favorite part of some of these traditions is is nobody knows like where they started. Sometimes, like you know, there's these, these long you know folklore stories yeah. of like, well, I think you know this guy maybe did it the first time, and then it became this, and all of a sudden now we throw toilet paper into the trees you yes. know, after a win. It's like where did that start? And it just gets passed on from fan to fan to fan, and all of a sudden it's like. No, this is just what we do. Which on that note, by the way, back in Gastonia in our second year, we had a salute to toilet paper night. So we actually decked out the entire stadium with toilet paper. We toilet paper at our own stadium. And made sense. Which made sense. We had 186 people show up. It was 104 degrees. Not much of a tradition. Uh, but all of our promotions were toilet paper. That tradition didn't stick. But the right. idea, think about all these Halloween traditions. Toilet papers, eggs. I mean, these different things that happen on uh, Halloween, I think. You know, some of those could be brought into the ballpark experience as well. So now can we get into... Fine, we can go. Banana stuff. Yes, well, sorry. We don't care about... Bananas fans are watching this. Bananas fans are listening to this. They don't care about everyone else's traditions. They care about You mean the 12 traditions. people from Montana? No, we, we now have 13 people from Montana watching. Yes. I think we do have one person from Idaho that is tuned in. Yes, boys. So we are thankful for those type of people. Yes. Let's talk about bananas traditions. Let's. Let's start with... I mean, okay, we... Full disclosure. We've only been here for four seasons. This will be our fourth season. It's not like we have this long storied... We haven't role. even played 100 games. It's not like we have a very long story of our franchise that, you know, things have been passed on for generation to generation. It's only us. But there have been some really cool yes. things that have been started yes. that people look forward to. Yes. Talk about some of those things and, and, and what, is, what have been created here. Well, I think the first tradition that is completely original that starts every single game yep. is the epic banana baby. Yes. Now, How did it start? Well, it started by, you know, we're inspired by Disney here. Yes. So we're constantly watching Disney. And, and Lion King is just such a classic. <laughs> and when you watch that opening scene holding Simba up to everybody, how can you not think, why aren't we doing that with a baby? 
And so, obviously, one day I was watching Lion King, and this is before I even had a son. Yes. So I don't, you know, again, shows yes. where, what things I watch. And I was thinking, what if we did that with a baby, put him in a banana costume, him or her, and actually hoisted to the crowd of 4,000 and sang Na Savania and had the whole stadium singing as this way to kick off the night. Right. What better to inspire a banana's win than a baby yeah. in a banana costume? No, I agree. And, and Do you I, really? Yes. All right. I think what's interesting <laughs> about the banana baby and why you know, I, I think you could prove that it is a tradition because now we have a waiting list. People, I, I'd have to argue people are having babies – Solely to. Solely to time it up for May 30th. That's actually, no, go back to when we say a lot of things, but we don't have facts. There kind are, of like, no, just like when we said like, hey, the bananas play better here. Yeah. And because of our culture. And then we had a statistician back that up with actual stats. Yeah. They're going to back that up with stats that say people are having babies. In to, like March and April. To solely be a banana baby. Yeah, and they're going to they're gonna find the stats to that. Because it's got to be. It's huge. We had babies showing up for auditions, which were the most ridiculous auditions because the, the mother would just hold the baby up and it'd be like, that looks like a good banana baby. It's like in those those professional cities when you know the team wins the championship or whatever, and then nine months later there's this boom in, in babies that are born that, that, you know, that month. It's like I think people are now building that into their family tradition that – you know, little Johnny, little Susie needs to be the banana baby. So we had it all planned out to make sure May 30th, 2019, ready to go. they were there. Well, you know, they're inspired. I mean, obviously, Emily and I put a lot of thought into this because, yes. you know, because Maverick. <laughs> well, we don't want to get into that. Well, we, no, we, yeah, we're not going there. But the reality is Maverick on 23 days old was our first banana baby in a 2017, 2018 season. Yeah. So um, fans, if you are planning to have a banana baby, I guess Please you let us start know. in August. I, well, it depends on how old you want the banana baby to yeah. be. But I think uh, Will, correct me if I'm wrong, who's backstage here. Will, we've actually been reached out to by people saying we are planning on having our baby yes. at this point. Can we please set it up? We're not, the baby's not born yet. Baby's not born yet, but it needs to be a baby. That's a tradition. That is a tradition. That's a family tradition. It happens every single game yep. at the same time, yep. same place. People know. And, and I think it's one of those things, like, if you come to a game, and, and let's say that you came to a game with someone who, you know, it was their first game. You're, you're a seasoned veteran Bananas yes. fan. You come with someone yep. in the first game. I'd have to imagine you would say, hey, the things you should look out for tonight, X, Y, Z – Banana baby, they do it. It's so cute, yep. so adorable. And all the players are going like yeah. this. This becomes the tradition. All the fans yeah. are doing this. Which, what does this even mean? They're standing. I don't up even know what this means. Yeah. But when you do this, you feel the banana baby love, and that equals a banana win. Uh, T- Tina Shemlian says that she actually met Toastman. Yes. And he's hilarious. See, I didn't make up Toastman. <laughs> no, you did it. All right. Talk about this is another baby thing, but but now a tradition that kind of has started here in the past year, and, and I think you make a good point when you're talking about the, the fans raising their fingers up for the banana baby. It's something that the fans can get involved yes. in. And, you know, as we were talking before the show, we were talking about, like, uh, you know, some of our games and skits and yes. all that. And for us, that's just unique. one that's way. Us. It's, yeah. it's unique. But, but a tradition is something that the fans look forward to. That they're to, a part of. And they want to be a part of. You're, so talk- a, you're not a spectator Correct. to tradition. Correct. You are a part of tradition. I'm not a spectator to our family dinners. Right. All right. I'm a part of our and family. And that's why dinners. it's important, right? That's yes. why cuz cuz then it matters to you as the fan and it matters to the team and that's why it's super important. We don't want our fans to ever be spectators. No, you not are at all. not a spectator, you are part of the show. So we're never going to say this is a tradition. If you're not going to do it, it's gone. Like right. like last year we tried to get uh we were leading the league in stolen bases. Yeah, so we we're trying oh, to get every time yes. the banana stole a base, they would be going like this. And something back some to that, the player. But, but it didn't catch on. It's not a tradition. Doesn't or work. last year when another pitcher was warming up, the whole entire team would come out of the dugout with with literally <laughs> chairs, with bats, with bananas, <laughs> with whatever to time the pitcher. That was hilarious. Yes. It's not a tradition because the CPL finds us. <laughs> so outlawed. when the CPL finds us and says we can't do it anymore, that no longer becomes a tradition. The best part, this is way <laughs> off topic. Which is the, perfect. The best, part, the best part of that was the ruling was that only one person could be on deck like like we were getting some sort of advantage by, by swinging a chair, swinging a chair, timing up in buckets. But the visual of thirty guys timing a pitcher because the hysterical. fans started doing it. Fans started getting yeah. up in timing. Imagine with their, four, with their own supplies, with whatever it was. Imagine four thousand people timing a pitcher. Yeah. Maybe they, they can't find us for our fans. Maybe we get the players up in the crowd. The players are in the crowd with the fans timing. No way to find us. Can't find us there. Can't we're not, find us there. We're not on deck. Yes, you can't. And then the fans, you know, I, I, I picture children being swung. Children being swung, banana uh, babies being other swung. Other fans. Other fans. Just 
Hey, you. You. Yeah. Kids. I mean, it's perfect. People are just ripping out their seats. So, fans, okay. if you want this to be a new tradition, let's, they shouldn't be ripping chairs out. No, I mean, please don't using... rip the chairs out. Keep those. I love this. Moving on. Great tradition. Hey, baby. Uh, yeah, that's kind of where I wanted to go. So that, that's we didn't go there. That's exactly where we, we went there. We got to Hey, baby. All right. So, Hey, baby. Yes. Started last year. Yes. And really became a full stadium effect. And Three-year-olds, 80-year-olds. Our staff. Our staff. I mean, people on top of the dugout. Media. Stuff. If you don't know what Hey Baby is, do you want to sing the song for them? No. Um, do you? No. Okay. Uh, hey, <laughs> hey, baby. Ooh. Uh, th- I mean, that's kind of that's how it goes. How it goes. Yeah. Uh, Look it up. Play it on YouTube. Don't use that. Don't use that as an example. Hey, no. Yeah, I'm not going to try either. All right, so that's bad. Anybody want to sing backstage? No. No. Okay. So how to Talk go. about why it was important. Why it was important. The idea of getting 4,000 people right. dancing during right. a game is special. Every night, our players dance. We have a breakdancing first base coach. We have our banana nanas. This year, man nanas, banana splits. There's a lot going on. But 4,000 people standing and dancing. And it was great. Our players would be on the dugout. Our staff would be on the dugout. Mm-hmm. The banana band is spread out throughout the hi- entire stadium. Yes. And the whole crowd is going like this. And then, ooh, ah. Yep. And then they're spinning around, getting yep. this going. It is wild. People that have come out from out of the, the the state to come to our games, and they look around and they're like, is this really happening mm-hmm. at a baseball game? Mm-hmm. That is a tradition. Uh, it's here for a long time. We're going to keep it going. And I'll tell you this, but we may introduce some more dances for the entire crowd of 4,000 people. Well, it's so important, like you mentioned, because... Not a spectator. Baseball has, has always been bent on being a spectator sport. Yes. You come, you sit, you watch, you go home... And we've always made, not not always, but we've learned over time That's that boring. if we can get people standing up, sitting down, dancing, cheering, you know, call, laughing, call crying, response, yeah. laughing, cr- happy tears, like all these different emotions of coming to a baseball game, like now that is a fan experience. Yeah. Well, well we were talking earlier, what's a great movie? You go on this journey mm-hmm. through the script and you mm-hmm. feel for these people and you feel a part of it and you're engaged and you, yeah. you, you put yourself in the shoes of the main character. That's what we're making or hope our fans feel that same way. So, uh, yes. Tina also says, dudes, this is a great idea about the fans getting in sync with the warm-up on the pitcher. All right, we're in. Tina, start the tradition. Tina starts the tradition. We're in. Yes. All right, another thing that <laughs> we've, we've also – the theme of this is we get ridiculed for most of these uh, traditions. Yes, or find. Another one that we have definitely gotten ridiculed for is the donut chant. Yes, it's great sportsmanship, I think. It is great. So, so if anyone hasn't been to a game, most Bananas fans, obviously you know what this is. There is a batter every single game who is picked by us. Originally, it was the guy with the most strikeouts on the opposing yes. team. That got too easy. It got too easy for that. We, we actually made it more of the you know, third or fourth hitter. Anyways, we pick one hitter, and they are the strikeout man of the game. Rise Biscuits and Donuts is downtown, and if that guy strikes out – Everyone in the ballpark gets a free donut the next day. And so Shark, our PA guy. Yes. He's more than that. He's more than that. He totally ad-libs. So he is literally screaming at fans, call, responses, music. And with when there is one strike, two strikes, three strikes, or before three strikes, he is amping the crowd up. Yep. And literally, before the pitch is thrown, he will go, donut. Yes. Donut. And all of a sudden, this like swell of energy takes over the ballpark, and 4,000 people are chanting, Donut! 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 It's a great uh, imitation right there. Well, I think that's what it is. Well, and what's great, the first game, it didn't start like this. No. He started by chanting just like, Donuts! 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 And then we were talking, we're like, no, think Toga from an animal house. Right. Toga. And then say it like, Donut! Because it's donut. easier to chant. And then the whole stadium starts chanting. It is the worst sportsmanship imaginable. Oh, it's crazy. But again, hey, the fans do what the fans want to do and I, I when mean, we lead them. We, so this year, uh, we're going to add to that tradition. I think we're going to create like a little wall of shame Ooh. for the players who have contributed to Bananas fans getting all these donuts for them. You know what my favorite part, though, is a player from Gastonia last year. He yes. struck out. <laughs> and then as he struck out, he tips, tips his hat his to the entire crowd and says, thank you. And because the crowd went nuts, they just got four thousand free yeah. donuts. That's a fun tradition. Crowd's chanting it. He's striking out. And then what happened at camp? Yeah. So this past year we had Bananas Kids Camp. Yes. Which we do two times during the summertime. And so Tyler Gillum and all the coaches are are running the camp. And so at typically during the end of camp they do a little mini games against each other. And so I'm walking out there and I I hear these kids chanting. 
and literally there's three kids on the field playing against each other and they're chanting donut at the kid batting and he strikes out and they all cheer. And they didn't get free donuts. No, just during camp. They're, they're, they're actually literally chanting at a 10-year-old. That's how tra- – that, I mean, that's, that's – I, I have to imagine the definition of creating a tradition. So imagine, like, kids, like, just going home, like, and whatever they're doing. Playing like, wiffle ball. No, someone's shooting a free throw. <laughs> donut. Donut. <laughs> like, I love it. I will, Actually, I want to hire those kids. Yeah, I mean, they are the ultimate taunting, like – They're right up our alley. Right up our alley. Last thing that, that I want to get into with us is something that I think has probably happened a little bit more organically, and that's what happens on the plaza yes. at the end of the night. And it's this culmination of these fans have come to this event and they've been a part of it. They've been with family or friends or coworkers or whoever mm-hmm. it might be, and they've ex- they've literally had this you know emotional roller coaster of an experience. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, they have to leave. Yes. But they don't want to leave. They want more of it. And so we bring all the characters: the band, the staff, the team, the yeah. players, the coaches. Everyone comes together, and it's like this miniature post game party. On the plaza. It's I, I'll remember last year and how it happened organically. It does. So, like, the, the band always plays pregame, and they go around the stadium and play, and they're amazing. And after one game, it just worked out that they were playing. And all of a sudden, it turned into, like, a Mardi Gras party. And they play this one song, this, like, jazz ensemble Mardi Gras song. And I remember it was the most feel-good. Like, Jared, we are not good dancers. No. We're not great dancers. But all of a sudden, our feet, we just start moving. Can't help and, it. And we start moving. And, and they're doing that into Michael Jackson or Jackson 5, I Want You Back. And, yep. and they're playing this dance song. And people are dancing and splits out there. And the players, and, you know, we're usually celebrating because we won because we don't lose much at home because of the culture. We've already talked about that. It's an unbelievable scene. You're giving out free s'mores. And I'll tell you, <laughs> it's so much fun. And for the fans that say, all right, baseball games are long, I agree. However, I challenge you to stay to the end of the game and yep. join us in a post-game party. Sing, dance, have fun with us. It is worth it. So that is one of my favorites because uh, I'll just catch myself dancing. I'm like, it's 10 o'clock at night, but I don't want to be anywhere else. Yeah. Traditions. That's what it is. So for me, and I got to witness this, you know, with my family after the game, and I saw, you know, you see old people, young people, kids, family. Like, there's so many different groups of people out yeah. there, and they're all coming together for this last bit of fun. They're taking pictures, and I finally got to witness it with my family. Uh, that was an undercover fan It's night. different yeah. witnessing it as an, as a, an employee where yes. you're kind of seeing it as like, all right, we're doing this for the fans. Yeah. But then as an undercover fan, yeah. I got to witness it like as a fan, as you're supposed to. I'm like, no wonder – these people love this place. Yeah. Like it, it, it just blows your mind what they get to experience from start to finish. You know, I challenge you and everyone from our team and our staff and our people, whether it's game day staff, full time people, when we get to that point in the night, become a fan. Mm. Yes, become Good a point. fan. Good because I'll, I'll tell you this: like every night, I tell myself I'm just a fan here, singing, dancing, high fiving, and it's so much fun. Mm. And when you do that, it's even it gives all the fans permission to have fun so True. for everyone at that point night become a fan join in high five and i think that's a really cool tradition a couple more comments here uh tris just donut emojis yep all, all the, the donuts. uh judy and steve cohen great fun we're huge fans uh so so again like these people are the ones that that know it that live it that breathe it yeah. they are totally a part of it all right if you have i, I was going to do a review of the week yep but I, sure. but I didn't write one down uh, <laughs> because I couldn't find anything worth bringing up. We only bring up negative reviews. If you want to provide a review, if you think that this show is dumb, if you think that we are uh, you know, over the top, if you think that uh, th- this show should be discontinued, please tell us. <laughs> And we would ask that you text Jesse, uh, his number, 781-424-2499. If you would like to visit me in my office, uh, I am available on Tuesdays from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. I still have a record of one person coming. Shout out to Tina, who, who Tina Osting, who always um, only came once. Actually, only came one time. Always only came uh, once. And so, so shout out to Tina for doing that. <laughs> And then Jesse continues to get texts text, and emails, uh, calls. Oh, yeah, yeah. Phone yeah. Calls. Because I go to sleep around 9. I'm an old man. Um, but I wake up in the morning, and I'll have texts at 12, 1 o'clock. Usually just like go bananas, banana emojis. But uh, text, even call. That, that's interesting. Judy says call. keep the show going. So okay. That's, that's strong. That's a good review. Uh, Trish says I usually have no voice at the end of the game. All right. I printed out <clears throat> the nine weirdest sports traditions. And this was compiled by the USA Today, and I have to say, 
they are weird. Let's have they them. are weird. And so what I want to do is is I'll, I'll, we'll go through these. We'll talk about them. Yep. And then how do we apply them to? Yeah. See, stuff? see, can we make them our own? Okay. Go. All right. So the New Hampshire. Uh, let's see the New Hampshire hockey team, yeah. which is uh, the college hockey team. They throw fish on the ice, which I think is kind of a hockey thing. So whenever the University of New Hampshire hockey team scores its first goal, a fish is thrown onto the ice either to celebrate um, or just just do it in general is what they're saying. Is it one fish or is it numerous fish? Just one fish. All right. Fans, what could we throw onto the field after our first run is scored? Yes. And then wait. Because a fish wouldn't make sense. No, but the hockey seems to do this fish thing. There's another one in here about fish. But yeah, is there something, I guess, bananas? I mean, could we? I mean, yeah, I think people would see that as waste, though. Yes. Even, and a fish is kind of like. It's disgusting. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, if you have ideas on things that we could throw on the field after our first run, that's it. Because in hockey, they also throw out the teddy bears on hat tricks. So, well, no. The, or no, they're on they hats. They throw hats on hat tricks. When do they throw teddy bears? Teddy bear is a, a special night. That's a specialty night for okay. all the uh, uh, children's hospitals. Children's in hospital. The world. Get it. That's a great tradition. This is, an, this is the one you were talking about earlier. Taylor University basketball yes. does Silent Night. Yes. And so. It, you have to watch the. If you get a chance, go online and watch the YouTube video. Just look up Taylor University basketball silent night. This is a tradition where they are literally silent, like the entire pregame, like when the game starts. They, they are say literally silent from the tip until the tenth point is scored. Tenth Can you point. imagine going to a game and it's packed out? There's four thousand bananas fans there, and everyone's silent. Until one thing happens, the tenth point is scored, and then all of a sudden, the tenth point is scored, and the whole place erupts. They they rush, rush the, the court. They rush the court. There's confetti. There's balloons. Like it totally is mayhem I love on it. the tenth point. I love and it. they get a technical foul, which yep. is awesome. Similar to us getting you know <laughs> fine. Uh, fine every single day. Uh, so I don't know if you if you've seen that or if that's the one. Yeah, you're that, that's about. what I was talking about. I love that too. And it's like things like. When the visiting lineups being re- like, could our whole stadium have newspapers? You know, I've seen that in basketball where they're, yes. they're not paying attention. You know, how can we do to have this ultimate level of fun disrespect? Yeah, that makes sense. Yes. Uh, <laughs> University of Pennsylvania football, the toast toss. Before the 1980s, the Penn band would play a song called Drink a Highball, which is... Uh, That's liquor. Yeah, liquor. So fans would take the direction literally, and they would rip their drinks. And then alcohol was banned from Franklin Field, uh, and the students had to get creative which means making it more of a cult interactive thing. So literally, could we have a song played by the Banana Band where during that song, everyone has to consume their beverages? Okay, I'm following it there. I think we've got to just get the band on that. Yeah, it's, it's the band completely. Uh, a lot of toilet paper stuff. John yeah. Brown University, toilet paper night. All right, this is a weird one. That one failed for us. Yeah, the Detroit Red Wings do the octopus throw. Oct- octopus. Octopus throw. Yeah, you said yes. it wrong. What, what did I say? I said octopus. It was really weird. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 1952, Detroit Brothers <laughs> brought an octopus to the Red Wings' first playoff game, threw it on the ice. The eight legs represented the eight games a team needed to win in order to win the Stanley Cup. The tradition continued for decades, picking up steam in the 1990s. Uh, and then the team openly encouraged the celebration, uh, but now they've actually slowed it down and they – uh, have asked that not too many people bring more octopus to the game. It's octopi, uh, I think. It would be octopi? The throwing of an octopus now results in a $500 uh, fine and an ejection from the work. So that's a great tradition. Get it going. Get everyone excited. Now fine them $500. <laughs> I love it. I think it's. I think the plural of octopus is octopi. Uh, it's, I think it's multiple octopus. So really? So then the Nashville Predators, uh, they threw a catfish... What is with these fish in, like, sea? If anybody's a hockey fan, can they let us know like, what are why, they doing? why it's hockey stuff? Yeah. I don't get that. I just don't like these throwing these animals. It seems the, the idea lives on in various forms, most notably in the 2018 Stanley Cups. Our Stanley Cup. Um, there was actually a fish tank installed, and that would house four catfish, representing the four wins of the series. So they're literally housing the catfish in a uh, tank next to the stadium. I like things that involve, like, if we win and if we do certain things during the game. But I don't want to hurt octopus, pie, pe- whatever it is. Then I think you would like this one. The last one that I think right. is just – right. and this is my, probably my favorite one because it says in here no one knows where it started. Uh, for years, fans of the Chelsea Football Club would bring celery yes. to Stanford Bridge. And they would throw it on the field, creating this mayhem you would expect from English soccer fans. Why celery? No one knows. One origin of the story is that it was uh, inspired from a lower league 
this makes sense. The lower league team had its field overrun with celery. That makes a they're, lot of sense. They were playing on a poor field and there was celery involved. I love celery because celery doesn't have feelings. Good point. And that's the main reason why I love it. So we got some comments here on, on things okay. that fans think could be thrown on the field. Water balloons. Water balloons. That's pretty interesting. Just All right. chucking water balloons I into the field. Water balloons, almost like grenades. Uh, yellow plastic golf balls. Okay, those wouldn't throw that far. Water balloons, um, okay. But Judy, uh, the, the, Judy says, easy to pick up yellow plastic golf balls, which makes sense. Makes sense. And um, let's see, banana peels. Dangerous. Uh, Tina says, show should not be discontinued. Um, this is my 12 p.m. entertainment every single day. <laughs> a lot of people are just saying, should we throw bananas? Yeah, I think it's something we need to think about. That's a lot of bananas. That's a lot of waste. We'd have to figure out a way for these bananas to be reused. Do they become banana bread, banana muffins? Banana hammocks. Banana ha you don't use – banana hammocks make real – Throwing them onto the field. But then we they become banana hammocks? I don't know. That's what – I'm just I'm – just, just, you're, you're a voice of the people. Voice of the people here. All right. I get the salary. I could see the bananas. Um, when but do I like we, the water balloons. When do we do this? Is this after the first run, the first strikeout, the first I pitch? I feel like there could be issues. If everyone's throwing water balloons, and we got a big net, they got there's challenges yeah, there. Yeah, we don't want to mess with that. People would throw them at the umpires. We, we got to do something that happens. Like We know it's going to happen, you know, whether it's the first out that we get. Like, or what if we get to like, if we get to like, I like that 10th point. If we ever get to like a fifth run. But that could take forever. And it may not happen. But A, it may keep people interested. So if we if we I don't know I'm just trying to like how do we get people like oh we're at four runs and that guy on second base and that now, means it's a party now I got to go to the concession stand and get my banana or, or whatever or we're handing them out or whatever yellow tennis balls soft baseballs yeah I, I think there's got to be something something but like we're not like a, a normal type of like we're not a normal team so like something normal wouldn't make sense for us. Our, the only other issue I can see is that yes there is tons of netting tons of netting like anyone in the main grandstand can't throw them on the field I mean they would just be hitting so people in the box seats like getting so soaked. Is, is there something that we could throw into the air that everyone sees? It's like a big celebration, confetti. I don't know. Do we drop it? Like, so what happens at Blue Man Group is they have all the toilet paper come down. Yeah. At yeah, Blue yeah. Man Group, and the toilet paper goes everywhere. Is there something we could drop from the, the rafters? It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. But it's probably worth it. It's a tradition, and traditions require a lot of work. And they never die unless you have to start getting fined for bringing octopus to the game. Yes, or you have to throw people out of the game for, for yes. doing your traditions. Yes. Celery is easy. Everyone can bring a piece of celery, and it's cheap. Uh, no calories. True. You lose calories. You lose – really? You lose calories by eating celery. Yeah. So let's think of those other easy little items that people could bring. Because celery would go through the net. Yeah. But we, don't, we can't do celery. Just no. something small that could go no. through the net. Um, or baby banana. Someone said donuts, which is kind of funny. Paper airplanes, that's pretty funny. Paper airplanes fly over because people can make that. Whew. That'd be pretty cool. That's all I got. That's a lot. So we have tons of comments in here. If people want to continue commenting, yes. again, text us, email us, come by, see us. What things can we still create here at Grayson Stadium? What can we throw into the field? What can be that, that one thing that every fan knows how to do when they come to the game? Yep. We want to create more, more tra traditions. Yes. Whether it comes from us, whether it comes from you as the fan organically, we want to create more Bananas traditions. This one's to you, all right? Pointing to you, Bananas fans. All right, Let's Bananas fans, we will see you Monday. For another Bananas on Peel, we will see you Monday night Fan Fest. for Fan Fest. And if you have tickets, we will see you next Thursday. Bananas opening night, Macon Bacon, May 30th. Gates open at 530. The 2019 season is right around the corner. Get your popcorn ready. Get mentally prepared. Get your it's bananas coming. ready. Get your bananas ready. All right, guys. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.